out of Los Angeles. I mean, in Los Angeles, you are what you were, the drive, the, the car that you drive, the district where you are living. And everything is around this. All the magazines also are giving an interview, so pictures are speaking about what you were, where you are living, what you are doing, which premiere you are in. So I just wanted to know your opinion about this. We all are involved in this world. Yeah, I think, I think Los Angeles and Hollywood is the epicenter of this aspect of our American culture um, that we're looking at in the story with, you know, that, that kind of pop celebrity world and reality TV stars. And um, yeah, it comes, it's based in Los Angeles. So for me, the story had to take place there. It, the real story did, and you couldn't set it somewhere else because these kids were living in the suburbia right over the hill from all these celebrities, and they could actually see them there. So um, yeah, I mean, it is the center of, of show business in America, and I, but I think it's, it's permeating um, you know, American culture and, and I'm sure international culture. Uh, hello, Belinda Goldsmith from Reuters. Emma, you mentioned you've only worked with two female directors before. Um, at Cannes, we've got eight, I think, in a certain regard, but only one in main competition. And some figures recently have just shown that the number of speaking parts for women in Hollywood has dropped. Could I get the views of Sophia and Emma on the presence of women in the film industry currently? Do you want to take that? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I, I mean... I'm young, and from what I, can, what I can see and from what little time I've spent in this industry, I think, I'm not sure why that number would have dropped. I think um, from what I'm seeing, young women are at the helm of, you know, most of the big franchises that are coming out, the new, the new big Hollywood blockbusting pictures, and we're also sort of forging a new way in, in comedy. You know, it was Bridesmaids that was the biggest comedy hit of last year, and it's Lena Dunham who's, who's writing the new comedy hits, and, um, you know, and Rebel Wilson is hosting the MTV Movies. I don't know, I just, from what I can see, I think it's, it's actually a great time to be a woman in this industry, and, um, I, you know, I, I feel that I think we're doing great. I think. Yeah, no. You know, I mean, I think there's still, you know, there's still, there's still a way to go. I'm not pretending that it's, it's totally perfect and there's perfect equality throughout the industry. But I think we're moving in a really great direction. I think it seems really, I think it seems really positive. Yeah, I think there's more and more uh, women directors. So I, I'm always excited to see more, you know, all kinds of points of view. And I'm glad that there's. Um, I think there's more and more women going into directing, so I think there's going to be more and more, f you know, female different points of views, as well. If I may say a quick thought on this, um, I think women in film fall victim to much more scrutiny and much more pressure, and the reason there are maybe fewer women directors or leading females in the industry is because of that and because it takes an extremely strong, smart, intelligent, creative woman like Sophia to be able to withstand the pressure and excel in this industry. So. Props to yeah. Sophia. <laughs> Props to Sophia. She's wonderful. On my part. Mm. Hello, I'm Ernesto Garrat, Chilean journalist from El Mercurio newspaper. Uh, excuse my English, I'll do my best. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to know to Sophia first, uh, what about the um, uh, issue in your movies, in some of your movies with celebrity? In your previous movie, the actor, one actor was the pro uh, main character, and right now we have a group of kids who pursued the actor or celebrity life, and what was the opinion or the reaction of celebrities like Paris Hilton or Lisa Lohan after they see the movie? That, thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I think when I was... Working on summer, the film before this, I was thinking about this I, um, idea of, of wanting to achieve celebrity and what happens when you get there because it, I felt like it was in our culture so much, so much interest in people wanting to be famous and so I was thinking about that which, um, and then this is sort of a de development of that same thought 
you know, to another level. So it was kind of in the same mindset, just because I feel like you're seeing it more and more um, emphasized in our <coughs> culture. And um, and I, Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan haven't seen it yet that I know of, but um, I, I heard that Paris Hilton might be coming tonight, so I'll, I'll be curious. For, <laughs> I don't know yeah. if that's true. But um, yeah, so... One we, of the highlights, sorry, in making yeah. it was was getting a, a walkthrough. You had, somebody talk, asked about shooting in Paris's house, and that experience of, of her walking our crew through her house was... I don't know about you, Sophie. It was pretty amazing, though. Yeah. I mean, it was like... That was a highlight. It was a highlight for, you know... So I, I think she's going to like it. Yeah. Anyway. Did she explain the pictures or pillows or anything? Did she say anything about that? Yeah, she told me that a friend made the pillow, and she, she thought it was funny. Like, she has a sense of humor and, and thought it was fun, and yeah. she didn't commission pillows. At the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kev Geegan from uh, BBC News, uh, a question for Sophia. I understand that uh, a couple of the uh, real-life kids involved in this case have uh, taken quite public offence at the idea of the film being made about them and have suggested that they've been misrepresented in some way by this film. Were you surprised by that? What's your reaction? I'm not surprised, but it's not a documentary. You know, we, we made a movie, and um, I'm, I'm not too concerned with, with their reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, question uh, for Sofia. Um, social media is also part of this movie. Could you talk a bit about? Uh... Yeah, that's one of the reasons I thought the story was so contemporary because it was so different from when I was growing up, or you know, even ten years ago, this story couldn't have happened. And there's so much information and and the story information overload and and sort of a lack of privacy that um, I felt like these kids knew so much about the people that they um, admired that they felt like they knew them and they knew what they ate for breakfast and so I think that um, has, you know, having a big imp impact. Well actually when you look at something like Virgin Suicides 15 years ago and this film today there's just the whole evolution of from romanticism to materialism mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah to me Virgin Suicides is such an um, it's about innocence such an innocent time and in this story I felt like there was no no innocence. <laughs> I think it's amazing how, how self-aware young people are becoming as a result of constantly posting images on Facebook or Instagram or whatever else. You know, like, Everything's I, branding. Them. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I, think, um, yeah, I think it's a shame that, that, that some of that kind of naivety or kind of just being blissfully unaware, I think that's definitely being shortened that, that period of time uh, when you're not self-conscious. It's kind of it's yeah. sped up, but um, I don't know, it's just, it's just the way technology is taking things, I guess. And in many ways it's made, our, I mean, it's made our lives very convenient, but in other ways too, it's just completely distracting, you know, to be able to go on an airplane now where that was like the one place where you could not, <laughs> you know, you could get some, and now all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, I got wireless, so I better, I better check my email, I better keep working, I better keep checking my Facebook, I better keep branding myself, or it whatever it is. It becomes an yeah. obligation. Yeah. It, feel, it feels like you have to do it because everyone does it, and if you don't do it, you're falling behind in the times. Um, I think we have one last couple of questions over there. So, um, please, could you please stand up, please? Thank you. Laura from Life and Style magazine. Um, I think one of the interesting things is that these teenagers that the movie was made about uh, wanted to have a taste of fame, and now they have a Sofia Coppola movie made about them. So you'd think that it would be everything that they wanted. Was there any attempt to get them involved, and did they have any? Did were you guys able to meet with the people that your characters are based off of? Um, yeah, I wanted the reason I changed the names of the characters. I didn't want to make those kids more famous than they already are for what they did. So that was something I was you know, thinking about and wanted to make our fictional version. And I met um, two of the kids, and, um, you know, it was interesting to, to hear some of the stories and, and the little details. A boy told me that one of the girls really wanted to steal Paris Hilton's dog, and I, like, I couldn't even make up something like that. So all these little details um, added a lot to the story. Um, but, um, yeah, so I met two of them, but um, I definitely didn't, yeah, want to, you know, add to their celebrity for for what they did but it's just part of the story
and they, they didn't they didn't meet them. No. I met one of the character one of the actual girls actually. I met um, Emma's character. The girl Emma's character is based off of. Um, randomly by chance before I even auditioned before I even met with Sophie on the project and um, I didn't know about the story until until I met until I um, heard about the movie and so it, it was really it was really odd like I met her in a random circumstance for maybe two seconds hi nice to meet you bye um, and then doing research for the movie we watched a show called Pretty Wild and I didn't recognize her at first, but I recognized her tattoos. And I was thinking like, wait a minute. Uh, but that, it's just really interesting. And um, I'm kind of glad that I didn't meet her after I found out about the project because I feel like bringing it up and asking her about it might not have been the best idea, so. Claire, are you revealing right now that you are actually a member of the Blimmering? <laughs> no comment. We have another question. I think it might, might be the last question, though. Hi, I'm Apolline from CCTV6. My question is all to all the actors. Do stories like these make you disappointed or ashamed of your generation? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think for those of us that, you know, go to high school in the States and have known kids like this, it's, it's almost a little frightening. Um, it's a good warning signal, though. I think this is a, a great movie for at least us to make. Uh, because it's a constant reminder of what we shouldn't do. And um, yeah, I hope that's what people take away from it. Yeah. And they're not all like that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Not all kids are like that. Yeah. It's the farthest from our character, yeah. I think. Thanks, Taisa. Well, Katie and Emma. Katie and Emma, for sure. <laughs> There's hope. I think it was an extraordinary set of circumstances. I mean, other than the fact that it's set in LA, um, you know, my, I mean, just speaking from my character's perspective, Nikki's. Uh, she's homeschooled, um, her sister's her best friend, she has this very kind of like insular existence this where I, I don't feel that she's really uh, in touch with the reality. I think there's a real dreamlike feeling to, to what they were doing, mm -hmm. almost nothing bad can, can really go wrong when you're, you're, it just doesn't feel, when it just doesn't feel real. So I think they, there's a, a certain extent to which they didn't really it didn't. It didn't feel like it was really happening. Like it didn't really think it through. It kind yeah. of just. Yeah. But knowing my actors, I, it gives me hope for this generation. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say I feel um, bad or um, ashamed of our generation. I think every generation has their problems, and I think um, one of the problems we have in this generation is social media. And you know, you know, you've got Twitter, you've got Instagram, and you're so close, you can almost touch it uh, and touch these celebrities and. Uh, I think they just took it to the next level and uh, really <laughs> went over the top with it. And uh, yeah, you know, but everybody has their moments. Everybody uh, goes crazy and then regrets it the next morning. I mean, come on. <laughs> but now in this day and age, you, you do something at night, make a mistake, you regret it the, ne regret it the next morning, but it's still on Facebook, no. it's still on Twitter, <laughs> it's there. And that's what's so different about this generation that no other generation has dealt with. It's kind of like we have a digital memoir of ourselves that's going to be there and going to be out there in the public for everyone to see whether you're a celebrity or not. I'm so glad there and wasn't Facebook when I was <laughs> Oh, I deleted my Facebook. <laughs> but yeah. Um, it's hard to move on from the stakes because it's everyone keeps reminding yeah. you about that. Definitely. Definitely. So it, it's just, it's a different thing that anyone's ever dealt with before. So. Um, it's easy to be ashamed of our generation and it's easy to also fall victim to it and um, just go with the flow and because no one really thinks they're doing anything wrong. It's, um, it's not regularly viewed as a negative thing, but it can be very negative. I think it's also easy to judge, you know, and that's the thing too. And it's nice to, um, one of the nice things about the film is that you, you're able to uh, see the allure, and it's presented in a way without necessarily, you know, this judgment, you know, because that would have been a really easy way to go, and, um, yeah. I think we have one last question here. Good afternoon, Sofia and all the crew. I want to ask you something. It's about the music. You have a relationship with the music that is so strong, and I want to know if you choose the music that you put in your films because it's so important. 
and Sophia, you inspire a lot of my job, and this is a little book for you, if you don't oh, like thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, the music is always um, a big part of making the atmosphere and the feeling of a movie, so that's the part I really enjoy, um, that part of it. And um, some music I have in mind when I'm writing the script, the, the opening sequence, I had that song in mind, and then I played it for the, for the actors and the cameraman, and, um, and it has the energy of it. And then, and then some music we found while we were filming, and it, we played a lot of music on set, and there was one song that Emma liked when we were in the club that we ended up using in the movie. So. Um, for me, it's kind of the hip hop side of it was music that was less familiar to me, so it was fun to kind of get into a music that's not my usual thing. And um, and I feel you know I wanted it to be the music that you felt like you're really in this kids' world and world and experiencing it with them and had that energy. So um, I, yeah, I'm I'm excited about the soundtrack and it's you know a mix of of music that they listen to and then kind of random some German atmosphere movie, music from Klaus Schultz later in it. So, um, but I really enjoyed that part. And they, they helped me with the music. And as <laughs> actors, it really pumped up the energy and it got us in the mood and it got us like raring to go and ready to put our like heads in the game and get it all done, but have fun with it just like the real kids were. So. I'm afraid this is the end of the press conference. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon.